August, Southampton FC became the latest European club to become part of China's football revolution. Not many people on the south coast had heard of Zhao Zhisheng, the chairman of a Chinese company called Landa, who had bought 80% of the club for £210 million from Katerina Lieber and became the sixth English club to be bought or invested in by a Chinese company or consortium. Lieber had inherited the club from her father, Marcus Lieber, a member of a famous German business dynasty with a wide range of interests from construction machinery to printing. In 2009, and with Southampton in administration, a holding company controlled by Marcus bought the club and saved it, laying the foundations for a return to the Premier League in 2012. Unfortunately, Marcus wouldn't see that dream become a reality. The hugely popular owner died at the start of the 2010-2011 season of a heart attack at just 62. The club passed to his less popular daughter. Whilst Southampton continued to thrive, there was still the feeling that the club was bequeathed to Katerina rather than adored by her, and in 2016, reports began to emerge that a Chinese billionaire was interested in buying the club. But it wasn't quite as simple as that. Zhao Zhisheng is something of an enigmatic character. Whilst little is known about his early life, his personal website tells a rags-to-riches tale. He lists a number of former professions, including farmer, journalist, and most intriguingly, as an armed police officer. However, he began making serious money in China's real estate boom in the 1990s. His Lando real estate company, which he owns 59% of alongside his daughter Nelly, suddenly exploded in value in 2014, the shares growing by 700% and making Zhao Zhisheng a billionaire. Soon after, he would change the name of his company to Lander Sports Development Co. Limited. Why? The answer can be found in part at Manchester City's training ground. In 2015, Chinese Premier Xi Jinping visited alongside then British Prime Minister David Cameron, Chairman Khaldun El Mubarak, and of course Sergio Aguero. Xi is a huge football fan, and since coming to power in China, he has sparked a series of radical reforms of football and the football business so that it would become a world leader in both sport and the business of sport. Tens of billions of Chinese yen began flowing into the Chinese soccer league. Player acquisitions, foreign football clubs, TV rights, you name it. If it had anything connected to sport, someone in the Chinese elite would buy it, even if it wasn't connected to their core business. After the Z visit to Manchester, China Media Capital, in conjunction with a state-owned investment vehicle, bought a 13% stake in City Football Group for $400 million. The investments appeared to be made for two reasons. One, there were newfound opportunities in this booming area which the Chinese state and economy would help to facilitate, and two, investing in areas where the Premier had shown an interest in was a good way to show support for the leader. But at the end of 2016, restrictions were placed by the Chinese state on foreign investments by Chinese companies, in part because of fears of capital flight. Only a handful of deals could take place, and only those with the best connections could make them. As the Asia Times wrote, there was an undeniable pause as Beijing seemed to be trying to separate the patriotic billionaires who are eager to join Xi Jinping's crusade from those who are perhaps more focused on rapidly moving their billions past China's capital controls and into the murky washing machine that is international football. Zhao's movement into sports real estate and prompting eSports had been hugely successful. Building sports stadiums across China and even signing a deal with local government to build a half a billion pound sports town in the west of China. But his purchase of Southampton FC got held up as the investment environment changed. There was also the thorny issue of a corruption case from a decade prior. Although the payment of bribes had been widespread in China, Lander was caught up in a sting to catch former Hangzhou vice mayor Zhu Meiyong, who had skimmed more than £25 million from real estate deals. Zhao denied involvement and the company allegedly turned state's witness. Zhu and another vice mayor, Jiang Renji, were executed in 2011. This caught the eye of the Premier League, which had been looking closer at the hard-to-trace origins of wealth that had been flowing into the league from China and elsewhere. 
there was a suspicion that the incident may have contravened English football's owners and directors test, the so-called fit and proper persons test. But it's notoriously lax. Whilst some within the Premier League were allegedly very uncomfortable with an owner who had been involved in something that looked unsavoury, the rules state that a potential owner can only be disbarred if they are convicted of a criminal offence. Zhao wasn't, and the sale went ahead, albeit as a personal purchase by the Zhao family, rather than through Lander itself. But some changes to the rules were made. The Premier League agreed to change the rules of the owners and directors test, including one that would disbar an individual or group if it misled the Premier League during its investigations, and also to include a rule that disbarred potential owners if their actions would be considered a criminal offence in the UK, even if they weren't successfully prosecuted abroad. The purchase of Southampton is perhaps the biggest English scalp of Z's football revolution. The changing regulatory winds in China show just how globalised English football is and how economic policies made thousands of miles away can ultimately affect your football club. It may be the last Premier League club to be bought by Chinese money, or Southampton could just be the tip of the iceberg. Lieber had no doubts about the new owners. In a statement after the purchase, she said, Mr. Zhi Sheng Zhao and his daughter, Mrs. Nelly Zhao, with whom I have built a close relationship, share our values and ambitions. Saints fans will see what that means when the transfer window opens on January the 1st, 2018.